Okay, so density operators. Um, let's define them. A density operator on uh, any subsystem, it's time to draw my potato. So that's, that's any subsystem and then uh, there's a Hilbert space associated with this system or subsystems. Uh, it could be entangled with something somewhere else. It doesn't really matter. We are now trying to find a description of a quantum state that will allow us to go from system to subsystem to subsystems, no matter whether there is entanglement or not. So the density, mathematically speaking, density operator is an operator on this Hilbert space, which essentially satisfies two properties. It's supposed to be a positive semi-definite. So I quite often just forget about semi-definite and say it's a positive or non-negative operator. You know what it means, right? So that uh, if you diagonalize this operator on the diagonal, the eigenvalues will be positive numbers and you may have zeros. That's why it's semi-definite. So we, we allow some eigenvalues to be zero. Some people uh, often just add that it's a Hermitian operator. Well, let me just write this uh, here. Um, but of course it is because uh, being non-negative, positive, semi-definite implies it's Hermitian, right? So the second property is that the trace of this operator is equal to one. And that's it. So that's, um, <coughs> that's your definition of uh, density operator. If I give you an operator and ask you, is it a density operator? Then you have to check the two properties. If they are satisfied, it is. If one of them is not satisfied, then it's, it's not the case, right? Well, that's, that's mathematics. That's bare mathematics. Doesn't give you much insight until you start playing with it and understand uh, what it is really about. Let's then make sort of a connection with uh, what you know so far. So you may ask, okay, well, then there are cases obviously of an isolated system to which I can attribute some state vector psi. What is the corresponding density operator? Well, the corresponding density operator in this case is a projector on psi. So your rho is a projector on psi. Then, of course, you know, the next question is, uh, the obvious question is, how do we relate the state description to statistical predictions? And uh, so if we have observable m, then the, the average value, the um, expected value of m is trace of this observable m and the density operator. So this is how you calculate probabilities, essentially. Well, can we see it here that if we have observable m, the, um, the average value of m is equal to trace of m projector on psi, which you can see right away. Remember that trace of this operator here is equal to the a the inner product. <coughs> so when you, what we have here, we have a trace and we apply this trace to, because you know this, I should be better at drawing those things here. Anyway, I'm getting used to this light bulb, but you know, it takes some time and, uh, and you start thinking towards your iPhone and you start uh, drawing kind of weird things. Um, so it's a trace of the observable times the projection operator here, which of course is equal to psi m psi, which is expression that you already know uh, from the state vector formulation of quantum physics. So this expression, when m is a projector, it allows you to calculate probabilities. Now the the most interesting question is um, how to go if we have how to go from a system to subsystem in terms of a density operator. So if I have um, one subsystem here and one subsystem here, A and B, 
possibly entangled, but described by some density operator, joint density operator, um, rho AB. So now the question is, how do I get density operator pertaining to the individual subsystems? Mathematically speaking, again, so what, what do I have to do to this uh, operator here to get, uh, to get those things? Um, uh, but they call them, we call them reduced density operators pertaining to subsystem A, and this is a reduced density operator pertaining to subsystem B. The reduction is done by uh, the partial trace. So here is a new concept that uh, is quite important because this is actually a mathematical tool that allows you to go from system to subsystem level. And it's called partial trace. And the way it is defined, so the partial trace, if we have two subsystems, imagine that we have two operators, one acting on A and one acting on B. So I'll, let me just call it, let me take a tensor product of those two operators. So the partial trace over B, in this case, <coughs> you, you think about it as um, doing nothing to A and applying trace to B. So that is equal to A times trace of B. And uh, by the same token, I can define partial trace over A <coughs> as, uh, well, taking trace of A and actually doing nothing to B and that is equal to trace of A times B. Then you may say, okay, fine, but, but you know, this is a tensor product of two operators. We want to take a partial trace of any operator that, that I mean, most operators are not tensor products. Yes, true, but it's a linear operation. So any operator can be expressed as a linear combination of a tensor product, right? So you can always decompose uh, any operator on the tensor product Hilbert space as a sum of operators or, or the tensor products of operators pertaining to A and B. So that's uh, you extend this to any uh, by linearity you extend it to any operator whatsoever. So that's the partial trace. And it's good to um, do at least one example and uh, I'm just thinking where shall I write on this light bulb. Um, I would like to give you, uh, as an example, I would like to take uh, the state uh, which we looked at, um, namely I would like to take this, the, a, a pure state. Uh, so let's let this state be a pure state, Psi, something that we already looked at, sum over k, dk, a sub k, b sub k. So now rho a b in this case is a projector on this state. Remember that if we have a pure state, now we have a pure state of the composite system. So the density operator corresponding to this pure state is projection on the state. So this is a state that uh, you have a déjà vu experience. You saw this state, right? So it's a, it's written in a Schmidt form that will make life a little bit easier for me to do all the tracing. So first thing that I do, even though it's a pure state, now I want to go to the density operator um, language, and uh, I switch to the density operator language. I'll take a projector. I'll make a projector out of the state. So I project on this state. I construct the projector, and now I'll be doing uh, partial tracing. <coughs> when you when you write this projector explicitly, now I should have done a better planning for for the whole thing. So remember this thing, and uh, let me just try to isolate this thing, and I'll try to do the scribbling somewhere here. So the state, the projector on psi which again is our um, row AB, right? Can be written as sum over K and L. And I'm going to, let me just write it first as this way, DK, AK, 
bk so that's um, the cat side of the projector and the brass side now those are real numbers so i don't bother usually i would be taking complex conjugate at this point but uh, i know that uh, this state is the schmidt decomposition d is a real number so no complex numbers involved um, and then i have a so i just i should use a different index here so i just i have a l here and then b l here which then i can write if this is the first time you see it just you have to think a little bit about it um, i just write this as d k d l projector a well let's actually operator a k a l tensor product operator b k b l I hope it's 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 clear what we have here so we have um, you see we have uh, a linear sum of um, terms which are essentially the the tensor product of uh, two operators one pertaining to a and the other one pertaining to b so now i want to get uh, the density operator pertaining to subsystem a so i'm just looking at this density operator and this is equal to the partial trace so trace over b from row a b so that is a partial trace from that projector that we have here and we look at this expression and we remember our definition of the partial trace so we can see that uh, essentially we are going to be taking a trace of this and uh, multiplying it by the rest here and the trace of this is the scalar product right of bl and bk and that is zero if k is different from l and one otherwise so the whole expression here can be then written as sum over k so now we just have one index right because when we trace this terms becomes essentially zero except from this one particular case where k is equal to l so we have one index k d k squared and then we have a k a k projector on a k k is equal to l so let's look at this and, and you have a deja vu experience right because uh, we had this expression and uh, just recently when we were looking at this informal way of introducing density operator so that is uh, but but now what we did we we look at the state global state of two subsystems row a b i took it to be a pure state you know if you keep on extending essentially you end up um, with a pure state so the, there is a hopefully at the end of this uh, extension of adding subsystems that could be possibly entangled with your system and so on and so forth you end up with some pure state so um, row a b is a pure state of two subsystems so two subsystems are entangled and now we have this rule the partial tracing rule that takes you from the sub from the system to the subsystem level it takes you it as you, you you take the density operator of the joint global system and the partial trace will give you the density operators pertaining to individual systems and as you can see we did this calculations tracing over b so we just forget b and we get the density operator of a well, I can also do the reverse. You can trace over A, so you can just forget about it, and you get the density operator of B. And this density operator then allows you to make all statistical predictions using this formula. So I do hope it's kind of simple. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, the, the density operator is uh, a slightly more complex object, but it's, uh, after a while you get used to it, so it's not so difficult actually to play with density operators.